Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? 3.1, graphing method. Let's start a new chapter. All right, so like I said, there's gonna be a, a whole bunch of different methods that we're going to learn, but um, today we are gonna focus on the graphing method. All right, so um, to do the graphing method, all you have to do is graph both of those equations on the same coordinate plane. Um, I know in Algebra 1 you guys were taught to change both equations to slope-intercept form. That is perfectly fine. Um, but you don't have to. They're right now in standard form. So you can also graph using standard form using the cover-up method uh, that I taught you a few lessons ago. You just basically cover up the x to find the y-intercept and then you cover up the y to find the x-intercept. Um, but either way, however you like to graph, go ahead and use that method. Here is the first graph. Here is the second graph. And the solution to the system is where they intersect. So basically, this point right here, negative 4, negative 2. All right? And then again, the graphing method is the least accurate method just because you're graphing on graph paper and if your line is off by just a little bit, then your answer will be wrong. But to make it just a little bit more accurate, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing but on your graphing calculators. Let's go ahead and take those out so we can practice using the graphing calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and choose the size of graph paper. Now, if you were to go to the store and buy graph paper, it's just the size that you buy. But on a graphing calculator, you actually get to choose how big the paper is gonna be. It could be 10 by 10, it could be 1,000 by 1,000, and so your choice when it comes to the graphing calculator. Here's how you would choose the size graphing paper. On the calculator, there is a button that says window at the very top. If you click on the window button, you come up with a few options and that's how we set the maximum and the minimum size of our graph. Obviously the X minimum is the smallest side on the X um, coordinate and then the X maximum is the largest on the um, X axis. And so you get to choose how big it goes this way. Here's one thing you have to be careful with. This is a big thing. In the minimum, the negative part, you don't use the minus sign. There's actually a negative sign on your calculator. So the negative sign is right there. Do not use the minus sign. This is a minus sign. This is a negative sign. So make sure you do negative um, the minimum side. And then the y minimum and the y maximum, that's how big it's going to go this way. Again, the minimum part, use a negative. Do not use a, a, a minus sign. All right. And the SCL, that just means scale. You don't have to worry about that. It just um, gets you the increments in there. And so we're not going to mess with those. Just the X max, X min, Y max, Y min. For the most part, um, from negative 10 to positive 10 in the X direction and negative 10 to positive 10 in the Y direction, just a 10 by 10 piece of graph paper will work. So go ahead and set it however you want. But for now, let's just try from negative 10 to positive 10 in both the X and the Y. Another way you can choose to graph paper is by the zoom button. There is a zoom button up here as well. And that will basically zoom in and out uh, on your graph paper. Um, and then sometimes when your graph is so out of the picture that you don't, you, don't, you just see a blank page um, and you're confused because you thought you graphed something but you don't see the graph. Well, sometimes you can use zoom fit. Once you go to zoom fit, 
the graph will actually try to fit um, a graph in there that um, has uh, the settings that might work for you guys. So two ways to, there's lots of ways to change the window and the zoom of the graph paper, but those are the two main ways to do it, all right? So let's go ahead and look at the same example. We just did this example by hand, um, either by solving for the y and then putting it into slope intercept form or leaving it in standard form and covering it up to find the x and the y axis. All right, so let's do the same problem on your graphing calculator. First thing you have to do, go ahead and put it in slope intercept form. All right, there it is. <clears throat> the next thing you do is look on your calculator at the very top again. There's a button that says Y equals. Go ahead and put Y equals in the first one. So you're going to just put in 3 divided by 2X plus 4. Now, there's a few things you can use for X. Oh, also for the second equation, when you go in, put Y2 for the second equation for this one. But I was talking about this X right here and this X right here. How do you input an X? There's this button. <clears throat> it's kind of hidden in the calculator, but it's right here. It's X T theta N button, um, but you can use that as your X. And when you push it, you'll see that the X comes up. All right, so now that you have your X, um, or your Y1 equation in your calculator and your Y2 equation in your calculator, kind of like this. I don't know if you guys can see that. But they're in there. Go ahead and push graph. And you should have a graph that looks very similar to the one you drew by hand earlier. Now, here's the thing is we can go further. We're going to go and find where they intersect each other. Earlier, we had to solve those two equations, um, graph them and find where they intersect, but the calculator will also tell you how to find the intersection. If you look at the top, there should be something called trace. Don't push it, because actually I'm more interested in what's on top of the button, calc. To get to that, you would have to do second calc. Okay, when you go to second calc, you get some options. You should see the option for um, number five, the intersect. And that's the one you want. You want to find the intersection. Once you push enter, it'll say first curve, and there's going to be a blinker on your first line. That's good. Push enter, and then there's going to be a blinker on the second curve. That's fine as well. Push enter. And then it's going to say guess. So it's going to guess where the intersection is. That's fine. Push enter again. Once you push enter, it should tell you the answer. Negative 4, negative 2. All right, try it. I want you to see if you can do it on the calculator. It's the first time we're using it. We're going to start using it quite a bit. So practice using the calculator to graph it. I know it might be easier for you to do it by hand because you guys are all really good at doing it by hand, but practice it on the calculator because we're gonna do more complicated equations um, where the answers are not so nice. It's not gonna be perfect negative four, negative two. It's gonna be uh, with a whole bunch of decimals. So we're gonna try that. All right, let's go ahead and do a word problem, a high school dance. 
oh, too bad we might not have high school dances this year or um, hopefully maybe we'll have virtual ones that could be fun or um, we don't know we'll see but you are your school who was supposed to say your school sells tickets for its winter concert um, tickets uh, are five dollars for students and then adult tickets are ten dollars and then if your school sells 85 tickets and we make six hundred dollars how much um, how many of each ticket did we sell all right and so let's come up with some variables. Let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> declare what the variables mean. I'm going to say x equals students and then y equals adults. Let's come up with a cost equation and then a people equation. So we need two equations. Here it is. The cost equation is in red. It's $5 for each student it's ten dollars for each adult and together they make six hundred dollars and then the second one is the people equation there's a total of students plus adults and there's a total of 85 of us and so that's the uh, people equation all right so there it is we have two equations and two unknowns Go ahead and put that in the calculator. Try it. You've got to put it into y equals mx plus b form. Graph it and see where they intersect. Pause the video if you need some time, which you probably will. But here it is. There's the red line, the cost line. And there is the people line. And it looks like they intersect at 50 comma 35. Oh, if you notice on my graph paper, I went by tens. So instead of by one, two, three, four, five, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And that's sometimes very difficult to decide the units that you're going to use. All right. So it turns out that there are 50 students and 35 adults at the dance. Okay. So. We have certain types of systems um, when we graph. <clears throat> when you have one line crossing the other line, just like this example or like the two examples that we just did, we call that an independent system. It's just two lines, they cross each other. There's one solution where they intersect and it's right there. This is called an independent system. The last three examples we did or independent systems. But that doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes this happens when you graph. You'll have two lines that go parallel to each other. That means their slopes are the same and their y-intercepts are different. So it looks like they're never going to cross. That means you're not gonna get a solution. That means the system is called inconsistent. We have an inconsistent system when the slopes are the same, and the, but the y-intercepts are different. And then there's one more case that might happen. What happens if the lines are right on top of each other? Ooh, this way. So you graph the first line, and then the second line falls directly on top of the first line. Okay. That means that every X and Y is going to work. Um, the answer is all real numbers. And then we call that a dependent system. The one line depends on the other. Okay, so the, those are the three cases we have. Just when they cross, independent system. When they never cross, inconsistent system. And then when they always cross, um, dependent systems. So write those down because they're kind of important for um, future references. Okay, the next part of your homework is going to ask you to not graph. Hmm. It's going to ask you to, without graphing, decide whether the system is dependent, independent, or inconsistent. All right, so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and change those two 
um, equations, so they're in the slope intercept form, just like this. Once we've changed it, what do you notice about the slopes? The m. They have the same slope, which means they're either going to be like this, or they're going to be like this, one right on top of the other. Okay, so we have to decide which one is it going to be. If you notice the y-intercepts, these ones are almost the same, but one's positive and one's negative. So they're not exactly the same. When they're not exactly the same, this is not the case. We have what's going to be a parallel lines, which means we have an inconsistent system. All right. So again, same parallel lines. Um, I mean, same slope means parallel lines. Uh, different y-intercepts uh, means that they're never going to touch. If they were exactly the same, then they would touch. Okay. All right, this is our last example for the day. And as you can see, it's going to be a long one. Um, this is comparing city populations um, for San Diego and Detroit starting in 1950 and all the way to 2000. If you kind of glance at the data, San Diego started off with a smaller population and it rapidly grew. And then Detroit, um, started with a huge population, but then it started declining. All right, we're going to see which year uh, were the populations equal to each other. All right, and the way we're going to do that is by using your calculator. We're going to find the line of best fit for San Diego, and we're going to the, find the line of best fit for um, Detroit. Okay, so if you remember how to put this data into your calculator, Oh, before we put the data in the calculator, I wanted to change the years instead of doing 1950, 1960, 1970. We're going to change it so that 1950 is year zero, and then 10 years later, and then 20 years later, and then so on and so forth. All right, now let's go ahead and put this into your calculator. As you can see, you wouldn't be able to do this by hand like we did with the first few examples today. So we have to use our calculators to throw all of this data in. All right, so if you remember, this is the stat button. You're going to click the stat button and then edit it and then your lists will come up. You probably have numbers in list one and list two already. That's fine because we already did some of them. But we're going to go ahead and enter the years in L1, 0 through 50. Enter San Diego's population in L2. And we haven't done anything in L3 yet, but today we are. We're going to put Detroit's population in L3. All right, go ahead and pause the video right now so that you can put all of that information into the calculator. All right, so unpause and now you can um, move on and find the line of best fit for each of the cities. For San Diego, make sure when you do calculate, um, when you calculate and you find the line of best fit, Remember, that's the fourth option down. And it is lin reg for linear regression. When you do that, and it pops to, to this screen, make sure you choose L1 and L2, because you want to compare the year for San Diego. So you want to calculate L1 and L2. And that should be your first equation to get the Detroit equation, you can compare L1 with L3. So be careful. Change the calculations now 
so that it's calculating L1 with L3. So if, if you do that, there is the line of best fit for Detroit. All right, so now we did all that work just to find two lines. Now we have to actually find out where those two lines cross each other. Again, to do that, you're going to go to the Y equals button on the top and put those two equations into your Y1 and Y2. Once you put those two equations into your Y1 and Y2, go ahead and go to the trace button on top. There's a calc, find the intersection, and it should tell you the intersection is right around year 40. All right, so it'll tell you 40, and it'll tell you the exact population um, when they were equal. All right, that was a lot of work. That was a lot of information to put into a calculator. It's kind of the first time we've used our calculators, so the video is kind of long. Um, uh, if you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class. Otherwise, have fun with the homework.